Hey guys, um, I want to share with you all the gospel's good news, but I want to share with you some really great news, honestly. Um, a couple days ago in prayer, I just kind of almost forgot about it, honestly, but I mean, not purposely, but <clears throat> got these couple scriptures in prayer and this message. It was Psalms 20, Psalms 12, and Isaiah 12. Psalms 12, kind of, you know, it's not a mixed message, but it didn't, it was like, man. Help, Lord, for the godly man seek this, for the faithful fall from among the children of men. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. But then Isaiah 12 which, you know, I thought, man, after I read Psalms 12, I was like, man, Isaiah 12 is going to be kind of, kind of brutal too. Behold, Isaiah 12 and 2. Well, let's do 12 and 1. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Thou wast angry with me, Thine anger is turned away, and thou comforts me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall we ye draw water out of the well of salvation, the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name, declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known to all the earth. That's the time that we're living in, guys, not a time of this corona mess, fear, It's come upon us because of our sin and our wickedness, of course. Because we've just turned from God and we've just made this surreal, real carnival atmosphere. <clears throat> and there's not a normal. But his word is constant, guys. And he wants the joy of the Lord to be our strength. And he wants us to draw from the wells of water of salvation. From that living water. He the revelation, he that thirsts. Hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. That living water, guys. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Not the joy of being able to go about our business and get out of the house. With all this lockdown, it's like distractions, like the whack-a-mole, like I said, and some of my other messages, guys. It's like, which... <clears throat> man, it's all twisted up and the government's a bunch of... Getting, you know, all these dictators have just popped up all over the place. Well, they're already there. But his word, that's what I'm saying. His word is the constant. His word is the good news. Great news. Awesome. But we're not going to get it, guys, listening to the world and the fear. The reason why everybody has so much fear over this coronavirus is because the world is afraid of dying in their sins. And how are we gonna be the light of the world if we're gonna shut ourselves up and follow, follow them down that rabbit hole or not? How are we gonna separate, how are we gonna be a separate peculiar people? How are we gonna stand on the word of God if we're gonna be afraid of the storm instead of knowing who created the storm? who has control over the storm, who can cause it to be bigger or to cease. It's time, though, guys, to arm ourselves and be prepared for battle. Joel's army. I don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Demonic guys. 
That's why Isaiah 27, 1 comes in. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up the sword and cut the head off. The sword of the Spirit, guys, is the Word. His living, breathing Word. And so that's why it's imperative that the five in the morning prayer, guys, that's what he's been really, 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 really pushing on me, pushing play on it. Call this nation for a time of prayer, weeping between the porch and the altar, five in the morning. I'm getting up at four now, and it's like, man, Lord, you said five. You told me to prepare for the battle before I pray. Okay, I'm not up every morning at five. I try to be, but sometimes I have to sleep in, you know, just because my body's physically exhausted because I'm trying to feel like I'm burning the candle at both ends. But I'm still on the wheel, guys. God's still molding and shaping me, getting rid of my flesh, too. But His Word is constant. Not time to grab your air. 15 and 300 bullets, it's time to grab your Bible and your sword and your prayer life and seek him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That daily bread, he wants to feed you daily, guys. That manna from heaven, that true and living word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. His salvation plan. Righteousness true, the stone that the builders rejected, that rock, solid. Great news, guys, the Gospels. It's great news, guys. But we can't be the light of the world in great news if we're so stuck in the mud in this corona bus. We've all been run over by it. It hasn't killed 50,000 people. I don't know the exact numbers, guys. I'm not, you know debating that kind of him but we all know it's pretty twisted so let's just say 50,000 it's killing millions guys slowly no job no food despair despondency no hope it's on a Facebook post. He was overseas, but he was like, man, I'm about to give up. I'm surrendering. I'm, kids don't have food, and, and it's true. No jobs, no rent money. And we're going to trust these people that told us to just stay home. Guys, let's get real. Trust needs to be in Jesus. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. There isn't another constant, guys. Everything else has failed. And you know how many authors do you know that have been around for thousands of years? <clears throat> or even if that, I mean, how many people still read books? From them? They don't. But we're going to get it in neology, not our theology. Yes, he wants us to study his word. Yes, he wants to dive into it. Yes, he wants us to just dissect it and because it's living, breathing word. But he wants us to listen first. One young man that I just befriended and it was really good post. So don't just come to don't come to him with a bunch of your wants and desires and needs. Just come. But he wants us to repent, clean the slate. Empty the buckets. Because, guys, it is time to wait between the porch and the altar and say, Man, God, I really need your direction. And that's not necessarily a want. That's just like, man, God, I just need some renewing of my mind, a clear mind, concise. And he'll give it to you. Says so, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. He's going to speak to us, guys. But the key is listening. It's time to listen, guys, to what the Spirit has to say into the church. Why did it say, come unto me, all you labor and are heavy laden? Come on. You know, man, this world's wearing us out. But what does it say next? Learn of me. 
How are we going to learn them if we're not listening and paying attention and being obedient and following his will and direction for our lives? And we're not about our father's business because we're too busy either hiding, debating, waiting for another day for it to come back to normal. What's normal, guys? There isn't a normal, guys. There never was. It was just a talk about fake news. We want, you know, the enemy has been lying to people for years. It started out with Adam and Eve, the very first lie. Did God really say that? It's after our image, guys. Why is there so much? Just, I'll pick this one and then I'll get off of this. And all this sexually deviant stuff. Pornography. Fornication. And yes, it is. It is murder, but abortion. It's a god of convenience. That is, that's a mess. I let babies die. One sin covers another. It's all. It's all after his image, guys. We're his image. We're the light of the world. And the enemy's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And we're letting him. Hiding in plain sight, we've locked ourselves up. We stay. We followed. You know, I get. I'm gonna. I'm sure, I'm gonna hear it now. Obey the laws of the land. Really, bunch of dictators. that are telling us to do. You know, really, where are some of these coming from? Look at one of the main ones. The guy, in the governor of New York. I mean, the most. A lot of this stuff is just about the abortion is the big thing for him, kind of, you know. And now he's barking, oh, we're going to be broke. Man, look at the mess they created. We want to put our trust in them. This is a trap, guys. I mean, you get a $2,000 check, now they're throwing that out there. And a 12 it, man, it's fake money, guys. Talk about fake news. It's printed up dollars that we don't have it's credit card debt that we're just going deeper into debt they never talk about paying it back it's just make more debt trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your path we're not acknowledging them guys if we're busy on this corona bus and this mess and getting caught up in this fear factor the world is scared to death because they're scared to death because they're scared of the separation of eternity because they're scared of dying in their sins and none of us can point the finger guys where were you when you were 18 or where were you 20 years ago or where were you last week or where are you today even? Sometimes we still got, you know, we're still on, some of us are still on the wheel. I'm still on the wheel. There's stuff that God's still pulling out of me, you know, some of it I don't like. But most of it I'm, you know, good with. And I know I'm pretty far along in the journey, but I'm not all, you know, but it's not finished yet. So it's like, okay, God. So we can't be pointing that finger at people, but yet we have to be that light. I'm going to end with this. It's, you know, the world wants to expose. Look what they did. You know, why, why the widow, or not the widow, I'm sorry. The woman caught in adultery. Moses, the law, the law of the land, obey the law of the land. Kill her, stone her, beat her to death. She got caught in the act. Not a very pretty woman. Not a good person. Do away with it. So wipe out. What did Jesus do? Kind of, yeah, honestly, he just ignored him. It's like, that's where we need to be, guys. That's where the separation comes in. We need to, and I'm not saying we should not pray for these people and the hurt that they've been through. And, and the act of me, man, I saw one fire, a, fire, a couple on them. There's a firefighter, but lost their child to this mess. To them, it, it is very serious. It hurts. And my prayers for those people, for their, for 
for their, for their hurt and their loss. So a child, I'm not, that, I'm not gonna mock that, that's, man, that's horrible, it's painful. But the fear that this world has put in us That shouldn't be. So it's time to turn. So this woman was caught in adultery. Stone her, kill her, wipe her out, destroy her. She just ignored him. I'd like to really know what he was writing, but writing in the sand. Then he looked up. Woman, where are your accusers? I don't accuse you, but go and sin no more. At least the worst thing happens. Don't go, don't, go, don't, go, don't go back to the vomit. Don't, you know, get Jesus to set you free and then you turn back to it. Guys, I am going to end with this. We're hiding in plain sight. But you know what? This is one of my messages. You don't want our wealth and fame. He wants our guilt and shame. He wants those secret places that we've hidden ourselves, from the world, from God, from Jesus, from the Holy Ghost. Those dark places in our hearts, guys. Those rooms where we won't go, we seal them with concrete and 18 padlocks and chains and he wants to set us free. Man, guys, I deal with the homeless a lot and some of the people that we deal with, they're old. Some of the one where we were going to for three years was was all 50 and older. And they got some hooks in them that have been in there for a long time, guilt and shame and pain. And I get it. Some of it they caused, some of it because they wanted to stay there. Some of them are, you know, horrible decisions. All that, okay, yeah, that factors in that. that it's true. Some of it. Some of it not, some of it's an attack of the enemy. There's, but it's, it's a ploy that he uses to try to keep a hook in us, to keep us into sin. When Jesus wants to enter in and open that door and shed the light and expose the sin so they can break that cycle and that chain, it's not, Instead, we're trying to do this inner healing stuff and figuring it out and our own understanding, dissecting it and this and that. I'm not saying that that's not going to do some good. But really, we need to, it needs to be brought to the light before Jesus. That's why that 5 a.m. prayer is so important, guys. The listening. Because he's going to tell you you need to know but are you listening so pray with me at five in the morning guys call a nation and the world to prayer get up get up get, get your butt up out of bed with me i don't always get up every morning some mornings i have to sleep in because i'm physically exhausted and god knows that but for the most part yes this morning was four i'm like been like that the past couple days i'm like man god i thought you said five and it's four three four Tell me to prepare for battle. So, get the sword of the spirit, which is the word. Don't go, go, go grab your AR-15 and 300 bullets and go march on the Capitol. <clears throat> Somewhat kind of necessary in the hour we live in, but really, it's the word of God that's gonna set people free. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, and you're going to get it from your prayer and listening to God. So I stick and poke my head outside my door, 3108 in my address. You can do the same thing. Well, guess what? You know what? Tomorrow morning at 5 in the morning, he sees, he says, wherever two of them are gathered in my name, you may be in your house, I may be in mine. My wife has a special spot out in the garage that she created. Mine is a living room.
time to pray and wait between the porch and the altar. I'm about getting back to normal, guys. It's about turning to him. There isn't a normal in this, guys. We can't go back to the same old garbage that was portrayed as Christianity and the church. Joel's army's coming forth, guys. It's gonna be a revival, a movement, an awakening. It's gonna be an outpouring of the spirit. But not if we're not listening, God, not if we're not purifying our hearts, not if we're not opening our hearts to him and to his word and to what he wants to do and not what we wanna do and listening, really listening. It ain't gonna happen. And we're not gonna be the light of the world if we're in darkness with them. If we're that flashlight with, that needs batteries and our bulbs burned out. And it's a renewing of the mind, washing, cleansing of the washing of the water of the word. Like Isaiah said, joy. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm glad that I don't, I don't care about all that. I mean, I do because of the hurt that it's caused people and the sin that it's caused people and the, the you know, the, the, the demise and the, that part, yes. But the rest of it, no, I don't care about it. Well, no, it's just a side distraction show and fears behind it. And I'm going to stand on the word and give us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. The same love that he had when he went to the cross, that he died for us. That love, his life, liberty, setting us free, that we can overcome, be victorious for eternity. He wants us back, guys. He wants to talk with us in the cool of the day, all day, all the time. But he just wants us to listen. And how do we listen with our hearts, not with our heads and our minds? So I'll see you at five in the morning tomorrow. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. The joy of the Lord is my strength. true for me. I'm sure it's true for a lot of y'all. Let's build on that. That stone that the builders rejected. To build our houses upon the rock, not upon sand. Love you guys. Because that's what's going to stand. <laughs>